to give you a lay of the land, so to speak, uh, about working this particular project. So this is my finished uh, one of the panels, so there's of course going to be two, or you could do a solid backing if you don't want this on both sides. So you'll see here my edges, all these uh, where the color changed happened. Don't get too afraid of those. I know we don't like weaving in ends, but this will be slip stitched together with the back panel so you can hide those in there. You want to of course make sure they're secure first. And then the other side, there's none. And that's because the color change happens on an even number uh, side. So for each section, and you, it may not register in your head when you first hear me say this, but when you refer back to the videos you're working on it, it'll make sense. But I want to at least put this in your brain. There are six, each section has six rows. So there's the spike row. The decorative row is one, and then there's five single crochet rows so that the next color change can be working down uh, five spikes, in or five spike increments, yes. And I want to also point out something when you're selecting your pillow insert. Your pillow insert should be two inches bigger than your finished pillow cover. So if you're using one that you have around the house and it's not maybe a standard size, which I have a graphic in the post about which size to buy for which size cover. Um, you can customize this to fit that. So you will need to be working in these six row increments, but how you would shorten it or lengthen it, I also have in the post, but I'm going to mention here, you can leave one or two rows off the very last section and also keep in mind that you'll be slip stitching this to the other panel and that's also going to take up a little room and if you need to slip in just a little bit closer to the edge to take away some of the size of the finished item because you do have to keep in the five stitch segments you can't just you know take a couple here take a couple there it will uh, disturb the design, but there's little tweaks you can make, and all of those also are mentioned in the post. But for the most part, you want to stay as close as you can to the pillow insert you're using. Now, for me, this was a stash buster. I have all of these yarns used in two blankets that I have in my home, and you may be doing that. So, to make that work, there's notes also in the pattern. Uh, you just want to make sure your starting row kind of lines up with your finished measurement that you want. It's not going to change too much width-wise from that starting chain. I used uh, category 5 for two of my colors and then category 4 is what I call the main color which is the deep gray that appears more than the other two. You also could use just one color as the accent and then the other one is the main color. The main color will always be the same. Do you see the spikes are always the same? And then the accent colors, the spikes are always the same. So it's an easy swap out if you don't want something quite this colorful. But I wanted to use all of the colors that I have. Um, I like color very much. Alright, so that's some little tips. So let's get going and I'm going to show you how to do the spikes. I'm excited to show you the project trackers I have designed and I wish I did this years ago because they have been really wonderful to have. So first of all, nice size, fits right into a project bag and this is the large print. In the front of the large print, I want to show you, there is a true to life 4 inch ruler so you can check your gauge easily. You don't have to fumble around look for a ruler. I've used this quite a bit in just the past with four projects I've used in this book. And there's also small print. And each of these books has sections for small projects, mid-sized, and large projects like blankets. 
so the small projects, there's 60 stitches, like a, you know, a dishcloth, something like that. And there's room for notes, and I have space after each stitch that you check off. If you have to put a note, maybe you changed a color, you changed a stitch, you changed your hook, all of that can be in there. Mid-size projects, 180 stitches, and there's room for notes. And then the blanket size, 330 stitches. And then let's compare the large size print, which I need because I have terrible eyes since I was a teenager, compared to the small size. So handy. And of course, a link will be available to get these if you want one for yourself. I want to give you a little tip because when you're doing these spikes and keeping your stitches loose, it can be hard to see where you're supposed to pick up that next single crochet so that everything stays in the perfect count so you get an even wave. I put a safety pin. So here's the five stitches that I'm going to be doing the spikes with. This will be my next stitch of five single crochets so I won't have to be digging around and looking through where that spike is or where the spike uh, sequence ends. I'm going to show you how to work the spike stitch for the Tranquil Waves decorative pillow. I've already done my first few rows and the spike row to make the waves is starting at this point now and of course the uh, link to the pattern is below. So this pattern is worked in multiples of five and we'll be doing the spikes in multiples of five. So for my first color change I've gone down a yarn category size to really add to the texture. I started with a chunky weight and now I'm using a category four yarn. So I'm going to single crochet five stitches first Three, four, and five. And now I'm going to start the spikes. And all that is, it couldn't be simpler. I'm just going down one row. One, bring up nice and high. Be loose with these, otherwise your project work will curl. One, go down, ladder down one more. Two, nice and high, loose up. Three, lower, and all the way up. Get your arm loose. And the fourth one, even lower. And then the last one, pull up that yarn and go down. Let's see, make sure in the right spot. There. Pull it up, pull it through. I'm gonna get this loop here on the back a little more snug. Not too loose, but loose enough so the project doesn't pucker. We want a nice smooth pillow. Right, and then I'm going to do five single crochet and then repeat the spike sequence. One, two, three, four, 
fly. No? Here we go again. Spike. Up. Next one down. Two. Three. Four. You have to admire your work along the way, don't you? And the last one of this sequence. Five. I'll do five more single crochet. And I will meet you back when I change color again to show you how it's progressing. Pull up, nice and high. Wave starting and ignore my little white yarn here. That's just to tell me which side I'm on because with this pattern being reversible, sometimes I forget. Right, so I'll put this into my next stitch where the marker is. It's a single crochet, take it out. Five single crochet. One. Head. One, two, three, four, five for my spikes. There's my single crochet start here. And another spike sequence. Go down one. Two. Three. Pull up. Oops. A little snug. Four. Pull up. Make sure I don't have any pulling there. And all the way down for my last spike. Up, not too much. And five. Go into marker. Take the marker out. And we're only doing this marker fiddliness for the spike rows. There aren't that many of them, so. Not too tedious. Certainly not as tedious as fishing behind stitches you've just made to count them. This is supposed to be fun, right? Not tedious. Single crochet can be a little tedious, can't it? But that's how we do spike stitches. So with single crochet. Okay. So that's how you work this wavy stitch.